Hello again everyone and thanks for watching the channel. So it's painting time again and um, I've got another snow scene. This will be the last one for the time being but as they say keep the best to the last. You'll see I've already painted this before and I've framed it and I'm hanging in our hallway. This is a scene that I painted about six years ago when we were on a cruise to the, the fjords. Um, and the ship stopped at a small island called Spitsbergen, which belongs to Norway. The view was spectacular, so I just had to get the paints out. I went up to the top deck and, um, as you can see, I managed to paint this snow scene. Now, this is a fairly long video. Um, it took some time to do this painting. It's, uh, the video is about 50 minutes long. So I've um, tried where possible to explain all the various parts of the painting. So you might have to stop and watch certain bits. Okay, so here we are. Um, I just used a sheet. Remember my new pad that I bought? I'm um, 140 pound. Uh, cold pressed, it's got a fine grain, taped it, taped it on the board here and I've actually um, taken a picture of the uh, snow scene and I'm going to use that as a, a reference just to remind me um, what the painting was like. Right, um, just before I start um, I'm going to uh, again um, talk you through this painting basically step by step. I'm going to take my time and comment on the brush strokes, um, the shading, the shadows, whatever I'm doing. I'm just um, conscious that um, there's a lot of, of videos on YouTube where the artist um, there's little speaking, little talking instructions and it's basically a, a 30 minute or a 20 minute painting and at the end of the day you've got a, some super paintings, don't get me wrong. But um, the question I would then ask is if I was a complete beginner or somebody who's only painted for a few months, would I be able to tackle something like this if it isn't explained? So I'm going to continue with a slow, uh, you might find it a bit methodical, um, instructions and um, hopefully at the end of it you will be able to, to have a go at something like this. Okay, so um, we've got a line for the horizon for the water. And I'm just going to put one along here. Right, that'll be that line. Sorry, I'll be that line about here. Now we're going to put the um, the big mountain on the left. Uh, so that will go up. What I'm looking at is I'm just looking here to see how near that peak goes to the top of the painting, uh, the paper. So then it's quite high. So I'm going to take that up to about there. Uh, there's another that comes up and that'll start to come down like, a bit like so and it goes right down to the base and down to the, the area where the some of the buildings are. Now we've got another bit just about here and it's uh, a little peak here, another one here. And then it goes up to quite a craggy bit. And then there's a, another area here. And up to a big pointed part at the end and down. Some bits like so. And there's one or two little bits here. Right, so that'll do for the the mountain area. Um, I'm just going to take that one down there a bit. It's a bit wider. And then we've got um, what the snow seems to have gone from the bottom area. There's a lot of brown 
earthy parts here and a lot of the buildings, uh, you remember at the beginning I said that it was a kind of a research um, island so these are not houses, they look, I don't know, they look more like um, storage areas, office blocks and buildings like that so there's, there's one, two, there's about four or five that I had in the painting so I'm just going to carry on like that um, there's another one here, the grey roof and there was a tall building, I don't know what that is, it looks like a possibly a water tower or something uh, but that will, that will do and what I'm going to do is just um, suggest where the reflections will be so that big mountain there there will be a, a dark area up there and um, these bits there and the boat's going to go in the center but I'm going to just leave that boat for a minute um, I'll put that in probably afterwards so I'm going to um, do this um, in two stages um, I'm going to paint the top part right down to here I'll finish that then I'll tackle the water and as I say I'm going to leave it and I'll put the, the boat or the ship in at the end Well, that's stage one complete, the sketch. So over to stage two now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the sky and try and block in as much of the, the hills as possible down to the, the water level. So let's go over and show you mixing up the colours. Right, I'm going to start off with my old favourite cobalt blue. It was a super day if I remember right. One or two clouds in the sky, but nothing too big and heavy. Um, so I'm just going to mix up a wash here. Just adding a little bit of water. Okay. And I'm needing a slight bits of grey for clouds. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of that. And some of that light red colour, if you remember. We mixed up grey. That's a super grey. Right, so back to the painting. So what I'm going to do is... Um, I've got uh, my old favourite brush here, it's a bit worse for wear as you can see. I'm going to paint the top part blue and then I'm going to dab out some clouds with a crushed up piece of paper towel. And I might drop some little bits of grey in, so let's see how it goes. So just double checking, got enough blue here. And off we go. Never tried this paper for some time, so be interesting. Right, so I'm just going to start at the top and uh, now you have to paint fairly quickly here. And just carrying on. It's not too bad, it's starting to look okay, but I'll need to get a bit of a move on to get these um, nice white clouds. I'll explain to you in a minute once I get this uh, filled in. Come on. Right, that's not too bad. Right now, just try and 
get it nice and flat. In hindsight, I might have been better with a a big flat brush, but anyway, that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crunch out some nice clouds, not too big. I just want you know that sort of size. side of the paper and maybe one or two smaller ones up here right that's not too bad you can see I'm just picking up the the loose paint right that's not bad just going to maybe make another bigger bit there right that'll do and I'm quickly going to use that grey that we mixed up and I'm just going to drop some of a uh, Lightly drop some bits in here to suggest a bit of um, shadow in the clouds, and then get the brush and just soften it off and just let it all fuse in and it'll soften off. And that's not bad at all, quite like that. So what we need to do now is just leave that. That's the sky complete. Well the sky is dried quite nicely and what I'm going to do now is um, tackle the snowy mountains in the background. Now I'm, I normally um, for snow scenes if I'm painting shadows I usually paint the hills or the mountains first and then add some shadows but as you can see in this um, painting there's quite a lot of the actual rocky craggy bits of the mountain, the brown areas, it's not all covered in snow so in watercolour painting that could be quite dangerous to make the brown parts, paint them in and then add a, a light grey shadow. I'll just show you what might happen. Um, here's a piece of um, blank uh, scrap paper. Um, as you can see I've just kind of suggested a bit of the the craggy rocky bits of the mountains what we're going to do. Now I'm just going to have mixed up a grey wash here and I will be adding it in these areas so you know if you you can see what happens there that starts to smudge look at that you don't want that because I would just be coming down here and then it's I could see bits starting to smudge so your hand would then would have to sort of go over this again so this one is slightly different from what I normally do. So I'm going to um, just use the grey wash. The light was coming from the left hand side so this area was really white. A lot of snow there. This bit here was full of nice white snow and these bits here but the shadowy parts on here big grey shadows and grey down there, some here, so I'm going to fill in all the shadow parts first before I start to add the, the detail of the the craggy rocky mountain parts, so here we go, I've mixed up a, a big wash, just let you see it, here it is it was some of the old favourites again, cobalt blue and a touch of that light red. 
So I'm just going to try and fill in as much as possible. Just zoom out a bit so you can see it all right. So I'm going to start on the left hand side and work my way up. So it looks as if there's big shadows down here. So I'm going to really just follow that shape of the the mountain down. I'm going to just drag some bits down there. It looks as if it's all in the shade. So when I come to um, paint all the crags, the bits of rough rock area, I know that I won't have to go over um, this area again. And just come down here. This is where a lot of the snow seems to have sort of melted in bits and um, it just merges into the, the brown area of the, the area down where the, the buildings are. Right, that looks really nice. Quite pleased with that. Now there's a bit here, some light shadows down to about so far. It must just seems to stop about here. It'll, yeah, it'll be the, the lights hitting here, so it'll be the shadow from here, this big mountain part, and then it starts to get lighter as we go up. So the the sunlight's obviously hitting this part now. So I'm just going to take that up there. And one or two little bits. And then I'm going to go up to this bit up here. You'll notice, um, maybe you can't, I'm just going to let you see. I've got a piece of towel here and I'm just dabbing it if I feel the paint is too strong, too much paint. I don't want it being too dark. So I'm just dabbing it as a, every now and again just to take the bits of the paint off. Right, that's quite good. So I'm going to do this bit here now. Seems to be a big shadow part here. This bit, and it seems to stop about here. Then we've got the super white all the way up there, and lastly over to the right hand side, uh, probably about here it seems to start. It's all in the shade over the side. And lastly, down here. Right along there. Right. Can we please with that? Not too bad. Right, that's enough. That's the shadow area covered. I'll just let that dry now and um, I'll start putting in the, the rocky parts with a dark browny colour. Before I start putting the detail in for the actual mountains, I'm going to do the uh, paint in the ground here, which seems to be very little snow, it's all brown colour, so I'm going to use a bit of burnt umber and um, let's paint that in. So I'll swing round, let me see up here. Right, that button number. I'm going to add a bit of yellow ochre in there, that's better. It's a bit, that was a bit too bright that. I'm also going to use some of that blue that's there. That's better. 
This is one of the bits you'll learn about painting, just mixing bits in to get the colour. As I said before, you don't get these in tubes, you just learn to have a go and see what you can come up with. So I was looking for a slightly different brown and I'm going to start over on the right hand side here and go along to the waterline. Right. I'm just going to take that straight along there. Might as well try and get along to the end and that'll be it. Established. Right, so just need to take the colour up. I'm actually just going to paint right over that, it's uh, quite a dark. Um, big tower. And smash this in with that. I'm leaving some bits of white as you can see just to give it a bit feel I'll move along to the other side I'm going to paint around these buildings because there's some looks like um, some of them are white and I'm um, just going to try and blend this in here So we're almost there. Just start to create that going up the side of the mountains. And the last one. If you recall at the start I said I was going to do the painting in two parts. I was going to try and get the top part finished and then I would tackle the, the bottom part for the reflection. So what I'm going to do now is um, all these super dark craggy bits on the, the mountains which um, will start to just bring this to life. So what I've done is, just let you see up here I've mixed up a big dark brown colour with some ultramarine in it, it was burnt umber and ultramarine and this is really strong dark, this is about 8s or 9s value and um, I'm just going to take it out a bit to let you see it now, um, there's quite a lot of painting here, this will take a few, a good few minutes, um, I'm talking about 10-15 minutes, so um, I might in the middle speed it up a bit so that you can um, just watch and um, then that will get us down to the, to the bottom to tackle the, the buildings. So let's get, so I'm going to start over on the left with the big, the big one and start to put some of these rocky bits in. I've got uh, quite a small brush, it's about a number four and nice point on it so I'm just going to get started. Let's try so I can put my hand on it. Right.
try and get a lot of these bits in, that's quite good. It um, suggests the shape of this part here. Yeah. What I've done here, I just want you to have a look at this, um, that dark colour I mixed up, I'm going to mix up some more because I need, I need quite a lot of it. It's uh, burnt umber and some uh, ultramarine blue which gives you a super, super dark. Now you might ask, why do you not just use black? Um, I don't like using black, I feel it's too severe. And these dry, it's a, it's a nice dark colour. But what I was trying to say there was I've softened this by adding some water. So I've got two different lots of uh, Two different tonal values of the same colour. That's about a eight. That's about a five, and that's what I'll be using as a go across here. Right. So I'm just going to put some slightly more um, of the stronger colour in on one or two of these bits. Just a little bit there. And that should have looked do. Just taking that down there to the ground level. Right. Don't want to do too much of this, you can get carried away. And you lose all the nice light grey that we've worked hard to get right, that'll do it. So that's one done. Um, I've got this middle part to do and then the, the end. So, as I said, I might just um, stop the, the commentary, if you like, and just crack on and uh, I'll speed up a little bit and you can, can watch it.
So that's the mountains finished. Um, so I'm going to get paint in these buildings and that should be the, the top part complete. So I'm going to put in a couple of light grey roofs here. And uh, another one here. So can I use one or two windows? And um Ish rather than white. Same with this one. I'll leave that one white. White a little bit grey. Then we've got a big, I don't know what it is, it looks like possibly a big water tower or something. Anyway, it's going in, it'll be a, a dark colour. It's a nice contrast. So I'm just going to put it in. pieces in and that will be it. Right, this one here. Some windows in here. And that door. I've still got to paint the end of that one. I forgot about that. So I'll make this darker. Get that 3D effect. Put in the shade. Right, that's about it. I'm, I'm going to um, these colours, here's this contrast again, they're too similar. I'm going to make this, no, I'm going to make that darker. Just enough to make it stand out, that's a bit better. One or two little squiggles round about the house. The buildings to there coming down, same as here, just to finish it off. I think that will about do. Right, brushes down, finished. So that's the top half finished. Just got the water to do now and the boat. That's the top part of the painting finished and um, as you can see I'm going for a coffee. That's taken the best part of 35 minutes. 
What I would suggest that you do is um, have a coffee or I would even suggest you put the paints away and actually give this a, a break or a rest until say tomorrow because there's still quite a lot to do and um, this is when people get tired and start making mistakes so um, I'll leave it up to you but if it was me I would uh, leave that until tomorrow. So now we start um, part two, the area for the reflections and there'll be a big grey area on the left here for that big peak and same on the right hand side there's some dark bits and I'll also do the brown area uh, where the waterfront area is where the buildings are. I've mixed up some, I've got some blue for bits of the sky I've got a brown and I've got some air grey that we like um, and here we go Right, so let's get started So I'm going to put, start in from here So that would be right across here and down to about there I'm going to put some big bits in here, some bits there, and a little bit up there. And what I'm going to do is switch to the brown, that nice brown colour, and put some reflection right along here. Bad. What I'm going to do is just drop some bits of blue in here for the, the sky and take that down to there and that's about it um, just going to blend that in there it won't be it won't be all pure white, but that's, that's enough to fill the colours in for the, the reflections. Just a little bit more blue there. Right, I'm also going to um, try and get a bit of... Um, bits in for the buildings right see if I can um, so that be about there I'm just going to try and put something in can you put this big one in that's there for that roof a bit there right that should do it I'm just going to try and dab a bit of that out there we are right try and get some that's going this way Reflections are the opposite of what you see. Opposite direction, I mean, so yep. Right, that'll do. Some bits of darks here. Bits of darks there. And some big bits up the top, and a little bit there. 
Right, that will do it. You can see that it's drying, it goes all over the place and you just uh, go with it and then stop. Well that's the um, reflections in the water um, complete. I just need now to add the boat. So I'm going to sketch this first um, just to get a rough idea what size it will be and um, let me put it in here in this super white area and make it like so. It's quite a, quite a large boat this. Um, I remember when I was first doing this I couldn't make my mind up what kind of boat it was. Um, I thought it was a fishing boat but then I discovered, as I mentioned earlier in the, the video, this was a, an island where they do a lot of uh, research. And um, there's a lot of um, sort of masts and antennae and stuff about. So I'm just um, going to put them in like so. I think that'll do a bit of a bigger one in the centre. Got a lot of bits and pieces, but uh, that will do. And so we'll get that painted. We make it blue. Get the reflections in, and that will be it. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've mixed up a, a bit of cobalt blue and a bit of that Thalo Windsor blue. We've got a nice uh, super blue just to finish the boat off. So let me come down here. Right, that paint is a bit too thin. I need to get some thicker. Uh, paint. Well, that's better. It's quite strong. Right. <coughs> the next part now is a bit, uh, a bit of a free for all. Just trying to make it look like uh, a boat that does. A lot of research and not a, a fishing boat, so I'm just going to have a go here. I'm mixing up a, a darkish colour, I'm going to put in all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, put a bit up there. I'm painting with the, the rigger. Pointy brush. And some bits at the back. I don't know what it is, but uh, can make it look respectable. Notice there's a couple of bits like this at the front. And there's one or two other mast-like things sticking up. I'm going to put one here. Right, that's not too bad. Let's make that one a bit taller. And get some on here. Right, now what we need is to get some reflections in. I'm going to uh, just paint the bottom of this boat first. Right, and now 
I'm going to paint some shadows in there, yeah, sorry, reflections. Got a rigger here and just going to be flicking it out. center. Make this one here. Another two bits. And that's not too bad at that. Just take that out a bit. Right. First go. That wasn't too bad at all. So just before I finish, I want to um, put some ripples in the water and um, just a suggestion of movement. So two ways you can do that. You can get a big flat brush, dip it in the water, squeeze, I'm just letting you see this, squeeze the paint out and if you push it very gently across some of the dark areas you can take some of the paint out and it looks helps to suggest there's a little bit of movement there so that's that side, not too bad you can also get some um, white paint and uh, put some in as well. I'll just let you see that in a minute. But this is quite effective. Good when you're cutting through the dark bits. Right, I'll just do another one or two. I'm going to do it down in the corner here. Right, that'll do. So I'll let you see um, <coughs> using the rigger and some white gouache or gouache, whichever way you pronounce it. Right, quite thick, keep it thick. And I'll just zoom in here. You could um, paint one or two lines if you wanted. got to watch you just don't do too much just going to drag some across there it looks better and I think that'll do well here we are the finished painting and overall I'm fairly pleased with the way the whole painting has um, turned out